I V M. You're listening to TFG Football. It's a Monday morning and we are here to talk about Indian football although the Indian national team has returned back from the Asian Cup sadly on a sad note but uh, we continue to talk about India domestic season will be back uh, I league has always been there I ISL had taken a break and uh, here we are talking about it uh, on the TFG Indian Football podcast my name is Kevin and Chiranjit joins me from a place where he had gone with all hopes but some hopes <laughs> Are still there. He had expected to play, yeah, see India play in the second round, but sadly, uh, you did see the second round. But India wasn't there. Chiranjit. Yeah, well, I, my I plan was to uh, because I I had sort of expected India to finish second, right? So my plan was to go to align uh, for the second round game where they were going to face China, and uh, of course, it wasn't China who played in the second round. It was uh, Thailand. So I didn't go. I came to Abu Dhabi. I watched uh, Iran beat Oman. Uh, it it hurts, man. I, I, tonight I'm gonna go play. Uh, I'm gonna go go watch uh, UAE take on uh, Kyrgyzstan, right? And and imagine if we had managed to score one early goal against Bahrain somehow. Like it's not inconceivable. If we had scored one goal, then we would have topped the group. and we would have been playing uh, against kyrgyzstan and if we had kyrgyzstan in the second round with this team you know uh, when we lost to kyrgyzstan it was in an adverse climate and we didn't have sunil chetri uh, we were missing like several key figures in the team with a full team we take on uh, you know uh, kyrgyzstan in uae i would have bet all my money on we would beat them and go into quarter finals that's how close we were yeah but i i still feel you know, the game the, the the tournament wasn't lost in the bahrain game it was lost in the uae game you know those chances that we created those sublime mm-hmm. uh, finishes that we had got you know, on time in the first half i think it would have been changed uh, a, a different game we could have you know had the same approach yeah. in the bahrain game had we at least gotten a draw in mm-hmm. the uae game i think the game changer was the uae not the bahrain game that is yeah, you know, that, that keep stating change so many things but yeah. then of course uh, uae and thailand would not play play out a draw of convenience yeah right so <laughs> uae would have beaten uh, thailand a few things would have happened differently from there it's still it's still like i'm i'm still not over it like i'm i still think about how we were looking at the clock running down and it was nearing the 90th minute and people were like in the in, in the stadium in the press box everywhere starting to pray like whatever 2 3 minutes additional time and we're in the second round and that's when the penalty happened it it's it's hard to get over man but yeah uh, life goes on uh, isl is coming back from the 25th uh, we have some very exciting i league fixtures coming up uh, top of the table clashes the derby is happening on sunday so everything everything will have to uh move on uh football never stops indian women's national team is playing uh, we have under 23 qualifiers coming up in uh, march so yeah every everything is going to chug along uh, but yeah this this is this is one pain that's going to remain with us uh, until we correct it until we correct it next time or the next to next time it's a long term pain yeah you know that's there uh, we have to you know, look forward and uh, looking forward that means mm. uh, what action are we looking at uh, isl uh, has taken a break uh, thankfully and uh, it will be resuming very soon and uh, you will be talking about more on the game uh, but what about i league now i league has not been taking any break been taking any break mm. and it does not need to take because it's getting more and more interesting <laughs> uh, it, it's not a Two two team race. It's, it's, it's a bit it's, it's a bit sad, Kevin, because the uh, national top division league should take a break when India is playing. But unfortunately, we don't have anybody like hardly anyone from I League is in the national team. So yeah. Yeah, the they only player we can. Of course, uh, it's the last season. The only player that was there uh, and 
and uh, uh, Salam Rajan Singh uh, did not get so much game time. But again, we are talking about. Hey, hey, he came on. He came on almost. He was a clean, <laughs> clean sheet. He was pretty good. Rose to the occasion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes, uh, on on the note of the uh, the national side, uh, the the women's national team is is uh, right now in uh, Hong Kong, and uh, they are there for preparing uh, for uh, in preparation for the 2020 uh, Tokyo Olympics. Uh, we already in the round two of the qualifiers, and uh, in preparation for that, uh, we will be playing a couple of friendlies in Hong Kong uh, against some sides uh, that are known to be. No, uh, uh, some, some, that will be a good test for for the national team, and uh, thankfully, uh, so this has not been a trend for the national uh, women's team, and uh, this is a good step in the right direction. Uh, Chiranjeev, what do you think about this? Well, uh, we have not had uh, national women's team playing friendlies for a long time, and now we have four of them, which is uh, pretty good. Uh, and uh, all four friendlies: two against Hong Kong, two against Indonesia. uh they are uh, going to be able to rotate a lot of squad uh, on a lot of the squad and uh, you know uh, see new players in action and this is what you cannot do in a qualifier right this is why we have friendly so that we can try out new combinations we can uh, see how uh, the team holds up uh, in different situations uh, experiments that you cannot do when you are uh, when your olympic qualification is on the line So 21st today, uh, this, this India versus Hong Kong happening in Hong Kong. Uh, I was uh, asking some of the Indian football team staff whether uh, we are going to get a live stream of this. Turns out uh, the ground that has been provided by the Hong Kong Football Association, uh, it doesn't have any elevated spots near it. Like that, there's not even a proper gallery, uh, and uh, it's it's a small ground. There's hardly place to stand with a camera, like set up a proper camera uh, next to the sidelines. But you know, I've I've been sort of bothering them and requesting them to get a live stream going, and hopefully, uh, I mean, if they manage to live stream it, that will be really good uh, because uh, the fans have not had the chance to see the women's team in action for a while now. So. Today that's one. Uh, Wednesday that's one. Then the team goes to Indonesia and plays uh, Indonesia on 27th and 30th. So it's it's a win-win for everybody. Like when when you have uh, good matches happening, the national teams taking on each other, it it helps out literally uh, both the participating teams and especially since uh, most of the women's players get only a few months of action in uh, in the domestic scene and. Uh, Uh, basically, have to play office football or just uh, you know take care of their practice sessions of their uh, by themselves because the national team does not convene for a long time, uh, in long stretches of time. This is going to be like can't even stress how important this is to uh, to get uh, get the chance to uh, experience this. So yeah, uh, hopefully some new players, uh, a lot, some of the. all the players have not traveled and uh, we're hearing some uh, in the not so good rumors about it about them having some uh, uh, clash with the federation and and how how the team is managed we should uh, you know before we speculate too much on that we should wait for details uh, and and more stuff to emerge but uh, for now i'm just looking forward to some new faces getting uh, a chance in the friendlies and hopefully whatever uh, the situation is with the former uh, like uh, the senior players they, hopefully it gets resolved before the olympic qualifiers happen yeah yeah and uh, on that uh, we will be looking at uh, the league that has been resuming after a nice break and a league which uh, requires more importance than it already has we're talking about the isl and uh, here it is on the 25th of january we will see the the evening kickoffs the prime time kickoffs uh, and uh, kicking off uh, the the uh, it's resuming back on friday that is the january uh, that is the 25th of january uh, it will be played between kerala blasters and atk eighth place kerala blasters team will take on sixth place atk and uh, the action will be uh, at kochi uh chiranjeet a lot lot happening here uh, kerala blasters 
uh, have just uh, done away with their coach and uh, ATK although they are mid table uh, there are mid table is, is always interesting in in ISL you know it just it just a couple of spots yeah, away yeah, from getting is good <laughs> yeah mid table teams win the trophy so uh, mid table is pretty good uh, in uh, in ISL but yeah it, i atk still have a chance uh, they just uh, four points away from north east united uh, so they have a chance to break into the top four and uh, you can tell the, the summer business that they have done uh, sorry the winter transfer business that they have done uh, is uh, uh, indicative of their uh, you know wish to really go for it uh, turn it up to 11 so it, it's going to be an interesting game kerala blasters need to make a comeback uh, the morale is at one of the lowest i have ever seen and uh, uh, yeah let, let's hope it it delivers let's hope the fans show up nobody boycotts uh, david james is not no longer there so hopefully the the crowds return hopefully uh, you know isl gets back going uh, with a bang I'm I'm putting ATK thoda ahead in this. Of course, Kerala Blasters' uh, uh, fan has uh, sorry form has not been uh, that well. I don't know how much this layoff would have helped. Uh, it, it layoffs really, really uh, favor uh, the teams that have been struggling because they can uh, have the time to go back to the drawing board and make uh, uh, deep changes and try them out. But still, it's a hit and miss situation, right? So, the team that has carried a little bit good momentum will have an upper hand. ATK have also been playing a lot of friendlies uh, in the meantime, uh, gearing up for this game. They they really want to uh, go hard at it. And I think you know why, Kevin. Mm. Why it's so important for ATK to uh, really finish this season in, on a good note. Yeah, I, I believe you have something very important uh, to talk about uh, with respect to ATK and uh, its future. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how important. I don't know how important it's going to turn out uh, in the end. But uh, we're hearing there is a meeting today in uh, New Delhi uh, between uh, some of the RPG officials and Mohan Bagan officials. So that's that's the situation we are in. If if RPG signs a deal with Mohan Bagan, that means the end for ATK. It means. Uh, RPG will invest in Mohan Bagan. Uh, we'll still have to find out whether it, they're going to get 70% or 80% stakes and what will be the amount of the uh, deal that comes in. But it, it's somewhere in the bo- ballpark of the uh, Quest and East Bengal deal. And uh, yeah, that that will be Mohan Bagan will get it to ISL and there will be no more uh, ATK. Yeah, that's fine. So, you know, uh, I feel this is a very good uh, step for both teams. Uh, both are lying in the sixth position. Mohan Bagan in the I League are in the sixth position. Not doing so well. <laughs> ATK is also in a right there, but I think they are in a better position because they can still make it to the playoffs. Uh, Mohan Bagan, somewhere they know, okay, this season is not in the hands anymore. Let's get some deal going. Uh, ATK, anyways, is going to fall out. So let's use uh, the fame that they had for this three, four seasons uh, in the past. Let's get them along as well. Uh, no use of uh, you know, keeping them aside and uh, along with uh, the, the celebrities, uh, they can still you know, manage a good uh, finish in, in the I-League. Uh, uh, but the future is looking bright. Mm, well, Mohan Bagan also have a very important match coming up. That's on Sunday. Uh, that's the Kolkata Derby. That is the only important and match they, they have. usual. That is the only important. Nothing else is important. First <laughs> well, place, second place, a, third place, important not important. Game. Well, uh, it, it's important from Mohan Bagan's perspective because if they can uh, win, they will completely squash East Bengal's dreams of becoming champions. And at, at, at this moment, that's what they can hope to do. Uh, it's not completely inconceivable to think that uh, Mohan Bagan are still in the title picture because uh, they are, uh, what, uh, nine points behind uh, Chennai City and if Chennai City have to lose three games and out of the rest of the seven and things can change but hey, you got uh, seven games to do that just, sure all the best yeah well uh, let's just let's just like leave that as an ex- one of the extreme uh, fringe possibilities because as I had said in the 22 years of National League after losing a derby you don't go on to win the league right so Mohan Bagan are already out by that logic. And if Mohan Bagan managed to beat East Bengal, then East Bengal will be out as well. And uh, we can more or less consider the uh, title shield for Chennai City at that point. Because uh, no, 
like you you do uh, i'm i'm very intrigued by this uh, title scenario in i league uh, do you think churchill brothers and real kashmir have the uh, you know durability to go out there and uh, up turn the table on genesis yeah, nice way to deflect the topic uh, but i think we will uh, you know take on that uh, question in the second half of the show but uh, right now we are talking about isl and the big match to look out for obviously you know, this is very interesting mumbai city will host bengaluru fc now this is going to be the game that we are looking forward to mumbai city have you know I would, had i would like to counter I would like to uh, disagree, uh, Kevin, because uh, number one versus number two in ISL league stage means rest everybody, play for a draw. I will keep no that aside for the moment. I'm not talking about really, you know, the standings there. We're talking about a team that has been dominant. We are talking about a team that has transformed gradually. You know, Mumbai City, the 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 start that they had, you know, it really didn't look like uh, it's going to be another season of uh, being there, right, right up there. But slowly, I think uh, they've got the combinations right. Uh, they've been, you know, very. Uh, you know tactical in their approach and uh, look at the results that they've got you know uh, the first two games were was so bad it really you no know, had everybody's hopes down but uh, the way uh, George Costa has got this team uh, the, the experience really you no know, showing there uh, so that in that perspective I, i really see this game as and you know something really to look forward to after the long break well yeah mumbai city is uh, one of the dark horses here you can uh, you uh, remember that mumbai city went to bengaluru and uh, held them to a 1-1 draw right? and they took on kerala blasters and literally blasted them away 6-1 it, it's looking like 2016 again uh, the consistency is there the depth of the squad is there uh, they they're going to be my dark horses to win the title uh, especially uh, since uh, mumbai city also we like some they have something more than just the season to fight for we've been hearing that uh, they might uh, get, get into a merger talk with uh, mumbai uh, with pune city uh, i don't think mumbai city is going away anytime soon because uh, uh, they, you you see the possibility there right i mean they're in a small stadium it's it's good atmosphere you, when you go to a mumbai city a home game you really feel there is energy right it's not like some of the other uh, isl games uh, especially it like if you go to delhi or uh, kolkata where you, you really feel like uh, everybody is just trying to pass the time and wait for a goal you you do feel that the spectators are there and and a core fan box uh, fan base is developing so with good results they can uh, grow that and uh, this this team really has a long term uh, potential so yeah uh yeah one of the better promising teams for showing better promising results but i don't really give them too much of a chance against uh, bengaluru fc yeah yeah uh, they'll come in better prepared yeah. they will be uh, and and they will have a few players who are uh, you know who will try to take out that frustration of uae on mumbai city <laughs> so and that's that's the game to watch it's a sunday kick off at 7:30 in the evening and that will be played at the mumbai football arena uh, we will talk about that game on the next podcast uh, but here we are at the end of the first half and uh, on the other side we will talk about the national top flight that is the i league on the other side let's uh, come back after the break Hello everybody, welcome to another awesome week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please make sure that you do. We are IVM Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So we did this last week and we had a pretty good response and we'd like to keep it going. So if you are listening to an IVM Podcast, take a screenshot of that, put it on your Instagram story and tag us with it. And what we'll do is we'll repost it on our story so that people get a look at what you're listening to. And uh, people who come onto our stories will get an idea of what kind of things people are listening to. Leave us a comment too, just don't tag us. Last week, we launched two new shows. We launched our first Marathi podcast. is called Golgappa hosted by a regular on our network Tripti Khamkar. Actress Shivani Tangsale is the first guest of the show and she talks about baking, her Everest climbing experience and her love for theater. And we also launched the Filter Coffee podcast hosted by Karthik Nagarajan. On the first episode, Karthik talks to film editor Nishant Radhakrishnan about focus group screenings, OTT platforms and the future of the Indian film industry. On Cyrus says, Cyrus is joined by writer Devang Pathak. He talks about what drove him to start his own blog, what's that funny and why critiquing the Indian comedy scene is important. On their 100th episode, the Football Total guys answered questions from listeners while twaddling about David Dehaia's amazing performance. 
Uh, the Kannada podcast Thalle Harate the host discuss how AI and machine learning is influencing our lives today and its potential for the future. On advertising is dead Anshulika Dubey co-founder of Wishberry talks to Varun about running a crowdfunding platform for creative projects in India. And with that let's continue on with the shows. Welcome back after the break uh, we continue to talk about domestic Indian football as you know the heartbreak okay we'll not talk about it anymore and uh, chennai city in action once again uh, it's going to be a great clash real kashmir uh, they are up against uh, the snow leopards as they are known as uh, it's going to be a home game for real kashmir and the real test for chennai city will begin right now Chiranjit how yeah. important is Chennai City's this next fixture do you think they can they, they just want to be uh, be there casually or really they going to be showing all the fa- firepower against who comes in front of them well they're going to uh, face Kashmir in Kashmir right and uh, this is uh, what uh, the, the match is on uh, 28 January and this is uh, uh, pretty much till the middle of uh, the cold winter in kashmir and you compare that uh, with uh, the, i mean of course they're not in chennai right now they're in coimbatore but still it's tamil nadu versus uh, the high altitude uh, ground in srinagar it's it's going to be challenging either way and it's a real kashmir have given trouble uh, at home to the clubs that have uh, shown the tendency to uh, use more wing play and uh, have a, a wide canvas to paint their picture like have more creative players have a better passing game uh, and and if you are going up uh, in that cold environment on that ground uh, against a heavily supported home team what happens is that the disruptive game play that they bring and the intimidating and uh, adverse climate it just it just like does not let you play your natural game that's why uh, real kashmir have gotten so many good results at at home yeah uh, talking about like, results chiranjit good. what about that goal what about that lob oh 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 okay oh, i can oh, just oh. have it in front that of my is... eyes that replena just keeps going again and again it's just so difficult to imagine you know the ball is being played from from behind you it's lobbing you have a defender at the side and at the same time he sees uh, it was pedro manji right and uh, you know yeah. you have to feel it for the keeper he he must have not seen it coming obviously yeah i mean <laughs> come on man it was commentating it was full of striking <laughs> and he goes the football gods will forgive you if you leave your partner for a goal like this oh my god <laughs> like to the extreme is she uh, this this is what shows uh, what smart recruiting is like right and this is this is how you uh, you know change your club around uh, uh, agwar nawaz came in and right after the season was over last season and chennai city were struggling chennai city sent him on a tour to scout and he found players who were actually capable no big names no like recognition and consideration of how many ticket sales he might drive he is a good player period and uh, the, he brought in some good foreigners and uh, used the local to properly uh, you know uh, balance it out in the team and uh, create a cohesive side and now look at chennai city are looking they they just completely unstoppable at this point Yeah, and, uh, they already have. Scored, like, they've already goals. been so good that the consistency factor is, you know, right up there. You talk about tactical, you yeah. talk about technical. The consistency is right. Then everybody expecting to them to drop, drop in form. But every time you think about it, they they just you know prove everybody wrong. And and that that's the matter of yeah. fact. Just one loss, and that you can just count it out. That could have been the only imperfect game that they had. they played in the entire 30 matches so far and you know it it matters it matters over over long mm-hmm. periods and uh, you know that is what we talk about the beauty of the league if you are able to do it over time if you are able to repeat that performance you deserve to be at the top and chennai city rightfully there five point lead over churchill brothers and real kashmir chennai you are still not counting a uh, 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 you know uh, uh, a legitimate threat from Churchill brothers you know you you you're still looking at how close they are between you know, the performances that they put up real kashmir and churchill brothers right up there you know putting pressure result after result you know it's chennai's uh, title to drop do you think chennai's 
Chennai city uh, are in a very unique position actually because uh, everybody knows what they're going to do. You know, everybody knows like they'll have their uh, passing game in midfield. Uh, they know the points of outlet. They know who to mark at this point. Still, nobody seems to be able to do it. And uh, I don't know if it if it shows the bad quality of other teams or the extremely like outlandishly good quality. Uh, that Chennai City have for Ali, because you know you know who's going to do it. Like Pedro Manzi is the goal machine. You double mark him, and uh, then uh, you know, who's going to be the other one to score it? Unless you're just uh, expecting uh, Jesuraj or uh, Raju to uh, step up occasionally, it's going to be the other two Spaniards uh, in the midfield, like Mister or Sandro. Right, so you need to watch mostly three players. Uh, and if you can successfully do that, then ninety uh, percent uh, of their outlet is uh, closed down. Still, nobody manages to do it. Uh, it could be a testament to the amount of distance they cover, the uh, the durability they have, the speed to dig into the game, and and just just the superb skill. It's it, it's this is literally like uh, Akbar Nawaz, uh, other than coach of the season should also get the recruiter of the season award. He, he went out there and found these players and it, nobody just seems to be able to uh, figure them out uh, over, even though they are doing, uh, even though they are seeing them do the same stuff again and again. Churchill brothers are a bit more cagey side. They are, uh, you know, uh, slowly building themselves up. Uh, you know, uh, Plaza, of course, is uh, scoring most of the goals, they've got, uh, you know, I would say less squad depth because if uh, and when uh, one or two occasions when Alcio has uh, not played, they have struggled. But still, it does not look to me when when uh, we are looking at, uh, you know, Chennai City play or Churchill Brothers play, they, they just seems to be a difference in the uh, amount of intensity we're playing. And you know what I mean? I mean, you you, you take the game that uh, Chennai City had against Aizol FC. And Aizol FC were bringing it right up. I don't know what they were doing that day, the 4-3 uh, goal fest. They were bringing the fight right to Chennai City. But Chennai City did not blink. Even when they were under tremendous pressure, and uh, they, they grinded out the win. That's that's how a champion plays. That's how you tell a champion from an also land. That a champion team under uh, extreme pressure will carry on even into the added time and uh, get the winner. And that that I just don't see from uh, Churchill Brothers at this point. I I don't even see that from Real Kashmir or East Bengal, to be frank. It, it just seems to be Chennai City and the, everybody else is on a very different level. Do you, do, you, do you feel the same way? Yeah, you know, what you put right now, you know, is, is, it's exactly how uh, it, it the season looks to finish on. Uh, they, they've not shown any signs of breaking. And Chennai City is just getting stronger with every performance. And, and it just shows yeah. uh, every time they have put up a question on, on their defense. I think they just uh, reply by, by, back with a with superb goal. We we've seen so many goals from Chennai City, and none of them have been having a pattern. They're they're scoring from set pieces. They're scoring from open plays, and this is this is a team that is built from all sides. It's not a one way. Uh, it's not again as you say. You no, know, your, your your squad depth is there, but uh, your goal scoring, uh, your your defenses are you know working in tandem with each other. So there's no way of stopping this team. Uh, they they've not even against the game that uh, that is coming about uh, with Real Kashmir. I don't see them sitting back. I don't see them waiting for uh, Real Kashmir to come to them. They're going to take the game to Real Kashmir, and that is the most dangerous team that you would want to face. And let alone the the weather condition. I think uh, Akbar Namaz uh, has already got a plan for that. You know, that just plays mm-hmm. out uh, in in a way that you're looking at. Uh, the weather conditions might be supportive of of the of the home team. You know they they've uh, been more accustomed to that weather, but it's tactical more than your physical aspect. 
I, I think that's the game won right there for Akbar Nawaz. And uh, yes, uh, the biggest threat right now is obviously not being you know, uh, able to finish the league well. Because I don't yeah. see a big challenge coming in from East Bengal. They've not been consistent this season. All they've got is uh, some good results uh, against teams that have been not doing so well. So, you know, it, 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 for me again, it is uh, Chennai City's title to lose. Yeah, I mean... And, and they've got some uh, easy win games as well. Like they've got uh, Arrows, they've got Lajong. Chennai City can still easily notch up enough points to just, just go over the mark. Even if others are recovering hard. You, you've got like seven matches left and uh, you have uh, just, just five points uh, to that, that you need to uh, you know, make up for. And uh, the, the title uh, leader has... Uh, uh, a couple of easy win games in there. Maybe they will get a uh, you know challenge from Real Kashmir. We don't know. Like when, uh, when they are playing in, uh, they they have not played too many games in uh, the northeast so far, right? Uh, so they they got two back to back games in northeast and they got uh, the game against Kashmir, uh, which will test them in very different ways. But so far, what have we seen from uh, this team? They, this team will not give a shit what condition you throw at it. It adapts. It evolves. There's intelligence behind the uh, uh, way it operates. You know, it's not like Mohan Bagan ki, okay, Sony Norde, left heavy, attack. It's not, uh, it's, it's even better than uh, uh, East Bengal's, uh, you know, Koizu Tech. And I, that, that's, that looks like a more deep team than I have seen uh, from East Bengal in a long time. And and I think, I, I really feel East Bengal will be running away with the title now. If uh, Akbar Nawaz had not gone and outsmarted them with a much smaller budget, but that's what that's the difference. Real preparation means that that's the uh, it's this this also should become a case study in Indian football. How you do uh, recruitment and uh, coach selection, right? You pick a coach which has real talent, which is uh, who is eager to prove himself, and you give him full power, and you let him build his team. And uh, you make sure he's got uh, you know, a proper good connection with the local players, and and this is what happens. It, it's like magic. Yeah, it, I'm I'm pretty sure uh, uh, you know, most of the ISL teams will not stand against the city. Not not even a chance. The uh, maybe the, the top three of ISL uh, will give a fight to the city. It's it's not others are not even going to be uh, that close. Chennai City are, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to see Chennai City play in the AFC Champions League if they win. Because uh, I, I'm I'm a bit scared about what will happen uh, in ACL and AFC Cup for Indian clubs this time. Next next year, 2020, could be a, uh, in a season of redemption. Which, which sort of brings us to a very tricky topic because, uh, you know, this this might be the last season for I League, and after this, ISL will be top division, and there will be League One and League Two. Uh, all the corporate clubs in I League, the Chennai City, your uh, Minerva Punjab, and uh, uh, Gokulam Kerala FC, signed an agreement when they came in that pretty much explicitly stated that uh, if the leagues are merged or restructured, they will have no inherent right or claim. To play in the new top division, so so MPFC, Chennai City, Kokulam Kerala FC, nobody can go up and say, look, hey, uh, I'm doing this or that. You need to let me play in ISL. But it's built in that 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 claim does not exist. So that that uh, that is irrespective of, whether you're the champion of uh, I League or no. Yeah. Uh, so so that's that's the that's a legal situation. But of course, if if ISL wants, if uh, if the Reliance, uh, they want, they can go out, go out and negotiate and get these teams into ISL. But so far, I have not seen too much of, uh, you know, green signaling from Chennai City that they will be able to just get the kind of investment uh, they need to get into ISL. And they just don't even seem that interested, to be honest. They're like, we we got too much shit going on. We're already thinking about Asia. We're already thinking about uh, you know, uh, developing the academy, uh, the, the stadium project that's uh, chugging along. Uh, residential uh, uh, facilities are being, being built. 
Uh, they had to take care of the stadium in Coimbatore for a few more years. It's, it does not seem like playing or getting into ISL is the top priority. How are we then about to have this brilliant team that has that has shown how much is possible if we do things right in Indian football? And uh, it, it's going to play in AFC Champions League if they win the league, which, which seems more likely every single day. Will they be playing in second division after becoming champions? It, it will be a crime scene. It will be a crime. Like, I, I, there's, there's no way uh, a true fan can accept something like this. That, that champion who has done so well, especially a champion, uh, potential champion like this, is facing relegation after the season. It's, it's just, it's still sad to think of, man. Yeah, this is the same situation where we saw Azol taking on. Uh, uh, yeah, but Azol had Azol had political will. Azol had power. So many other things went their way. East Bengal and Mohan Bagan muddied the waters up. They had the one city one team thing, which uh, for, uh, sort of caused them to uh, drift away from Azol, uh, and uh, the restructuring was delayed for a couple of years. Right? Uh, you had you had go, uh, the the uh, major student organization. Threatening to uh, fast and to death if Isol FC were relegated, for God's sake. Like they had, they had an entire state ready to uh, come down in the streets if Isol FC were re- uh, relegated. Chennai City are not going to have any of that. I mean, I, I, they've got a good fan base in Coimbatore, but it's still more on the casual side. It's yeah. not, it's not, I will die for this club, right? So, <laughs> I, I, and I don't even, even think they will muddy the water that much. And all I'm, Hearing from them is like, yeah, we got, we got our shit to worry about. We need to uh, work on our long-term projects. We were going to launch uh, scouting programs all across the state. That's what we're going to focus on. Like, let the Indian football scenario sort itself out. We're going to survive. Uh, like, put down our feet right here and survive. Which is smart for them. But for Indian football overall, it's a crime scene that they even have, they have, even have to think about getting relegated. After this performance, whether the league win the league or not. Yeah. Yeah, we will see about that. Uh, but uh, a lot of exciting matches in the I League to look forward to. Obviously, there is the Kolkata derby, which does not interest me too much. And uh, we will talk about that on the uh, on the next episode, along with the other uh, uh, big matches that we talked about in the ISL and the I League. Uh, and on that note, we will be taking. Uh, this show towards the end and if you're listening to us on YouTube do not forget to like share subscribe IVN podcast app is something that you want to download for many such podcasts like the I like the TFG podcast it's available on Android and iOS and uh, do give TFG football a follow on Twitter uh, stay tuned for all the updates uh, regarding uh, Indian football and uh, you can also find Chiranjit and me on Twitter uh, Boza underscore Kevin Chiranjit Oja uh, that is our respective Twitter handles uh, look them up uh, we will catch you on the other side of the week uh, with a lot of more to discuss and a lot forward to look for to till then uh, have a great week ahead see you How aware do you think you are of your laws and rights? Do you look up to laws when you are caught up in situations? Do you know what your rights are when you are stuck somewhere bad? Well, here's a show that can help you move an inch closer to being aware of what your rights are. Tune in to Know Your Kanoon with me, Amar Rana. This is a podcast meant to answer all your law-related queries. Catch Know Your Kanoon every week on the IVM website or the app or anywhere you get your podcast from. Hi, my name is Anupam Gupta. I'm B50 on Twitter. I am the host of Pesa Pesa, the show that talks money. On my show, I speak to experts from every field of money and finance. From stock markets, equities, debt funds, credit cards, life insurance, every possible area of money and finance that you can think of. We even did an episode on cryptocurrency. I've got fantastic guests from mutual funds to personal finance experts everywhere. robo advisory, startups, just name it, we've got it. At Pesa Pesa, we help you make smart decisions about money. You work hard for money. Now make your money work hard for you. New episodes out every Monday and you can listen to my show on the IVM Podcast app or any other podcasting app that you have.